In this video, we'll be going over the basics of car stereo installation. We get a lot of comments suggesting that we do tutorials on this subject. So let's get started with square one, how to wire a radio. Now back in the day, wiring a radio was easy as matching color to color from the supplied radio's harness to the vehicle specific harness that plugs into the car. But with features like steering wheel controls, backup camera, factory integration of amplifiers, climate controls, and more, it can get a little complex, but don't worry, we'll walk you through the process. Okay, so we're gonna go through the three most common ways to wire a radio. Number one, basic wire to wire, no factory options. Number two, with an interface module from either PAC, Metra or Skosh, and number three, wiring up and programming an iDataLink Maestro RR. Okay, so let's get started with the basics. So your new radio comes with this, your wire harness. Now this plugs into the back of the radio and has constant power, accessory power, ground wire, all your speaker connections, both positive and negative, and then a remote turn on and or an antenna turn on. Now that's gonna be wired to your vehicle specific harness. Now this will plug directly into the vehicle and then from here you just go color for color. It's easy as that, unless you're colorblind, which is more common than you think. We've had our fair share of installers that were colorblind and they said they've had to read the very small letters printed on the wire. So it's a little tougher, but definitely doable. Okay, so you can connect these wires a couple different ways. The best way is to use solder and shrink tube, but the proper use of butt connectors will work just fine. So let me show you how this is done. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is get yourself a good set of wire crimpers. Now you're gonna to wanna to stay away from those cheap wire strippers slash crimper combos. Get something that looks like this with the wire cutters at the tip and then crimpers behind it. So take your wire and twist it and insert it into the butt connector. Squeeze firmly, but don't overdo it. You don't wanna smash the end of the connector because the wire could come loose if you do so. After you're done crimping both sides of the connector, pull to make sure the wires don't come loose. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Just go color for color and then you'll be good. All right, situation number two. Wiring up an interface either made by PAC, Metra, or Skosh. Okay, so let's say your vehicle has steering wheel buttons for the radio or a backup camera or a factory amplifier or if it's a GM OnStar. It could be one of these things, it could be all of these things, or a combination of any of these. If you want to retain these features, then a module is going to be able to retain these things for you. So let's take a 2012 Chevy Silverado as an example. This pack RP5 GM32 is required to install your radio in replacement of a basic harness. So according to PAC, this will retain the steering wheel buttons, the factory Bose amplifier, the factory installed backup camera, OnStar, and retain accessory power or RAP. Okay, time for a breakers breakdown. Subject, retain accessory power. So when wiring up a radio, you have two wires that provide power. The constant power, which you would hook up to the yellow wire, and accessory power, which hooks up to the red wire. Now the yellow holds your memory for things like the clock, your preset stations, and any audio settings. And if the power from the red is taken away, like when you turn off the keys for your vehicle, then it powers down the radio so you don't have to turn it off manually. Now, a lot of new vehicles don't provide a standard accessory wire, and that power is provided by the body control module through data. One way to know if this is true for your car, if you turn off the vehicle and the stereo stays on until you open the door, then that is retained accessory power. But no worries, if you buy the correct module, it will tie into the BCM, providing that red wire for you to connect to. Now, as a side note, if you don't wanna purchase a module to provide accessory power, then you can tie into any ignition or accessory source. Now, we don't recommend that, but it can be done. All right, back to the original subject. Now, this module will provide for you all the same wire codes as the basic harness, but also give you a plug for factory backup integration and these two wires for steering wheel controls. What aftermarket brand radio you're installing will determine which wire you'll use, either the 3.5 millimeter plug or this wire here. To figure that out, simply take a look at the back of the radio, to see if you have either that plug-in or a wire labeled steering wheel control. Then after connecting either of those wires, refer to the owner's manual of the module you're installing and go to the section where it explains steering wheel controls. On the side of the module, you'll see a pot with numbers around it, corresponding with different radio manufacturers. So simply find the manufacturer 
and match it up with the number and set the module to that number. That will automatically program the radio to the steering wheel buttons. If you take a look at this module, there is a lot going on here and all this has to fit neatly behind the dash. That's why if you've ever watched our channel, we mentioned that shallow chassis radios are a plus for this reason. Okay, number three installing an iDataLink Maestro RR. If the above options are true for you, but you have other things that come through your factory radio, such as climate control, vehicle information like tire pressure sensors, oil life, and any type of vehicle status, then this module is for you. So this takes a few steps to set up, so we'll take them one by one. First, head over to the iDataLinkMaestro.com website, click on the green button labeled Flash My Module. You'll see this pop up, and if you don't already have the software on your computer, which you probably don't because this is your first time, then click on this hyperlink that says, get it now. Then just follow the installation software procedure, just so you know, this is gonna take a few minutes, so get comfortable. Once the software is loaded on the computer, it'll ask you to set up an account, and you're gonna need to do that as well. You'll need to go to your email to confirm and activate the account. Within that email, click the link that says, confirm my account, and that can take you where you can log in. Once confirmed, go ahead and exit, and there should be an icon on your desktop entitled Web Link Desktop. Click that, log on, and grab your Maestro RR box. Remove the micro USB to USB cable within that box and plug it into the side of the Maestro RR box. Then select the Maestro button, and then flash by vehicle. Select year, make, and model with the details. Then it'll want you to confirm the steering wheel buttons if you have so. Now make note, some vehicles are different. So if they're giving multiple steering wheel options, you're gonna wanna make sure you select the correct one for your car. Then select the brand radio you're installing and then the serial number. Click on the recommended software, then click to make sure you have the correct harness and accessories. On this page, how you would like to configure your system to display things like vehicle info, gauges, steering wheel controls, and so forth. Here you're able to map out the buttons on the steering wheel. It will default with the most common configuration for your vehicle, but you can customize them if you like. Okay, then after you hit continue, it will confirm everything you selected, and if it's all good, go ahead and hit flash. And from here, you'll want to download at least the install guide. So this guide has lots of pages, so you don't want to print the whole thing or have to scroll through 150 pages or so. So download the manual, open it up, and go to the search bar and type in the model of your vehicle. Okay, so this will take you to the first page with that model listed. So you want to scroll down to make sure you have the correct year and options. As an example, we used a 2017 Tacoma without JBL, so this is the correct vehicle. Each vehicle section is gonna be five pages long or so, so you'll only need those. Okay, you should be able to take it from here, but the wiring diagrams will let you know how to wire up the harnesses and which cables to use within the wiring box. But let's just go over which harnesses come in the box. You'll get the main harness, a rear camera interface, in this case, there are two, but you'll only need one depending on your vehicle. The steering wheel harness, similar to the last one we looked at, that's in the black RR box. And you're not gonna use the other cables within that box because we have the vehicle specific harness, but hold on to those harnesses just in case because you still may need them based on your vehicle. And the OBD2 connector, now this will transfer over the vehicle information to the screen showing climate controls, TPMS, vehicle status, and more. Wire it based on the instructions and you should be good. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. If you're installing your own radio, we hope that this cleared up any questions or concerns you may have had. Even if you're not and you're leaving it to a professional for installation, now you have a clear understanding on what it takes to install a radio in your car. Okay, make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. We are consistently creating videos around the best in car stereo, tutorials, and explanation videos like this so you don't want to miss out. I'm Josh from Breakers Car Stereo. Thanks for watching.